nothing else You know we're gonna have a laugh We're gonna have a laugh Oh yeah Cause this is the podcast Episode 3, Season 2, we thank our friends at Fandom. The Fandom segment's coming up a little bit later on. A lot of sponsorship buzz. I did a, I hosted an event last week, the Canada Post e-commerce awards, which is kind of like an Oscars for businesses in Canada that do merchandising online. Uh Oh, Hmm. and of course, because of my love for you guys and the fact I know you're all poor asses, poor, Poor. I, uh, dirt poor. I took the opportunity on the stage to solicit sponsors. Very Any nice. bites? I got a couple of credit cards. No, no, I'm, no, I mean <laughs> business cards. <laughs> Sorry. Credit cards are better. Credit cards would have been much better. <laughs> Let's just go to town. I got a guy, uh, I can't say it because he hasn't, you know, we're still talking. But Negotiations. He, he wants in. Perfect. But I got to be honest, I think some of the people who say they want in, they think that like if they just send us a box of donuts, we'll be happy. <laughs> mm, donuts. What kind of donuts? <laughs> yeah. Well, we might be happy. <laughs> uh, the fandom segment's coming up. Uh, Stoff is with me. Uh, Puffy, Sirius, Lester, all alongside. Yes, indeed. I had a disturbing uh, incident yesterday at TSN I wanted to share with you guys. So I played golf before I came to work. Shocking. <laughs> Beautiful weather. <laughs> And uh, I occasionally, I try not to shower at TSN because the showers in our building are essentially prison showers. Oh, I tell you, Brian, all the rumors about dropping the soap are true. Really? Oh, yeah, you can't hold on to that thing to save your life. Oh, we're slipping all over the place. Guys were laughing. Where do we have showers? They're disgusting. What about are they? Uh, well, no one listening will have any clue what you're talking about, but they're, <laughs> I'm just curious they're, da- they're down near the makeup room. There's a washroom uh, before oh, you really? turn left to the makeup room, and oh, in yeah. the back corner, there's three showers, and they're weird, disgusting. And people like, leave. is it an open area, or they're like, are they in cubicles? They're in cubicles with, oh, okay. uh, with shower curtains. Oh, okay. But they're disgusting, and people leave their soap, and... Ooh. And I used to, when I played football on the weekends in the playoffs, and we'd have to come in Sunday at noon, I would always shower there. Okay. And I, I have to admit, sometimes I, I, I didn't bring my soap, and I would pick up a soap that was stuck on the bottom and use it to clean my body. Ooh. It's very clean, I'm sure. Okay. So anyway, uh, Jimmy and little Jimmy, we get out of the shower, we're drying off. <laughs> <laughs> There's not oh, two of us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about your <laughs> 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 So... so uh, I have my, I have my I, I <laughs> little Jimmy. <laughs> you didn't join some Big Brother program, <laughs> did you? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we uh, we're I'm getting my suit on. Yep, and uh, all of a sudden, this guy comes around the corner into the little shower area, which is right at the back. You have to have a purpose to go there. Yeah, and he stops because he's kind of surprised because I guess no one's ever using it, and he says, "Oh, sorry." And I said, no, I'll just be a second. You can come in. And I thought that maybe he'd left like all his showering stuff outside because all he had was in one hand, he had um, like a tube. I don't know. It looked like one of those Aveeno creams or something. Okay. Yeah. Could have been a hair product. Could have been a cream. Now he's, is he fully dressed? He is dressed in shorts, a t-shirt. He's an employee, clearly. Okay. I don't know him. I do not recognize him. I don't really know anybody outside the guys on TV and you guys, you know, pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, so he w- waits outside for a second, just outside where the normal bathroom stalls are and everything. And, uh, I hurry and I come out and he, and, and, and he goes, okay, um, I'm good. And he walks in cause I'm still right there. He walks into the shower stall. Yeah. Fully clothed in his running shoes. Okay. And pulls the curtain on the shower stall. And so, um, We go, Jimmy and little Jimmy, we go to the front. We're dressed now. (laughs) And I start doing my stuff, shaving. Yeah. You know, putting my hair together. It's about a four-hour process. No, I'm probably, I I, I brush my teeth. I floss. I, like, fix my hair. I do my tie. I shave. I'm probably 12 minutes. Okay. He's still in in the stall. Now, is there any water flowing? No. Wow. Now... I don't want to be insensitive here because yeah. there's a chance, you know, it's, it could be, uh, you know, eczema or yeah, something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, I, was just, uh, I was thinking that. Yeah. Oh, and which is all completely fine and understandable. Yeah. Um, but it's, why wouldn't you just go in the, the bathroom stall there? 
more room, more privacy. Yeah, more like yeah. Cause, I mean, p- stalls can be a little bit confining. Right. Plus, you got a toilet right there. Was there a roll of paper towel in his other hand? That's what I want to know. <laughs> no, no, there wasn't. Like I said, I'm sure it was innocent. But then I, he was bald too, so maybe I thought he was oh. like a Rogaine type thing oh. he was doing. Anyway, fascinating. No real point or end of the no. story. No, that is weird. That's, that's, I, w- that's, I thought I was going to wait. I decided I would wait and see if he came out looking different, but then I started to feel creepy, so I left. So you left before he came yeah, out? Yeah, we're talking 15 minutes. I, Ooh, I left. Wow. And still in the stock. That's a little weird. Yeah. yeah a, little a little weird. A little strange. Not as strange, though, as the Rod Smith recap. Episode two of season two was a musical tour de force as three different hit singles dropped. The Rubber Boots Guy debuted his Taylor Swift remix. The old Rubber Boots Guy can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, because he's dead. Sirius Lester and Duffy did a coffeehouse version of their new hit, Face-Off Violation. Instant devastation. Face-Off Violation. And Rod Smith Baby dropped this baby maker on the ladies. I'm not the man they think I am at home. Oh, no, no, no. I'm a rocket man. If your girl is listening to this with you right now, make your move. Trust me, she's ready. Meanwhile, Duthie recapped his NHL play-by-play debut many years ago when the satellite feed went down. He had out to center, and uh, seems it seems to be a whistle. Stick to hosting, kid. Roddy's versatility is rare and beautiful. Later in episode two, Duthie had yet another vivid, strange dream. I'm sitting in the woods with Jimmy Kimmel, and he's working out. And Jay Leno comes by and was grabbing Jimmy's thigh. They tell me your erect penis went down. I hate Leno. Weird. Duffy might be the only human whose dreams have Rod Smith with his clothes on. Puffy's hypotheticals challenge the boys on how they'd survive in the woods with Jason from Friday the 13th. If I'm dead, doesn't matter, black guy always. Yeah, that's true. That's right. I'm going to go in the woods and I'm going to run the opposite direction as Lester. The guys also had a lot of questions about the German weightlifter who got a five-pound weight plate stuck on his little Deutschman. Was he aroused? Was this at a public gym? Was it a bet? A well, bet? Did he pull it through and then get aroused? <laughs> Five pounds. Big Rod straps three 50-pound plates to his little Roddy and does four sets of 15. 11. 12. Come on, little Roddy. 13. Two more for the ladies. 14. This one's for you, kid, up to 50. Yes. Uh, that's it for this week. Roddy needs his protein shake. It's a mixture of whey, almond milk, creatine, and raw organic New Zealand Viagra. Till next time, kids, keep pumping. <laughs> that's it. That's there you go. Yeah, that really that's good. fantastic. Rod Smith uh, <laughs> at it once again with the recap. I think, you know, I say this every week. But eventually we're going to get the email from the Prez that says you can no longer use Rod Smith. (laughs) (laughs) It should have already come. It should have already come. (laughs) Uh, Yes, so uh, Rod is a legend, as we've said many times. Stuff from last week. Okay, uh, first of all, the hit uh, single Face-Off Violation, as mentioned, uh, uh, Lester and I wanted to invite you all into the process, the creative process, so we kind of... Uh, winged it. Can you wung it? No. No. No, you <laughs> definitely can't wung it. <laughs> three Gemini Awards, thank you. Uh, <laughs> only three. <laughs> only. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Lester. Um, That's now, me. we were going to auto tune my voice. Yes. Uh, but Slacker Christoph was busy, you know, whatever, doing Jane Dan probably, so we didn't have time for that. No, we're going to do that another time. But Lester put a more polished version a face-off violation together. Oh. I finally hit the big time. I'm center in the big line. I'm gonna win this draw. You hear the crowd up. Maybe I'll chip it to my wingman. Or through my legs back to my D-man. Stripes drop the puck. I'm gonna push my I move a little closer, but then suddenly He's pointing to me, I got a penalty Man, this just can't be Instant devastation Face-off violation All right. 
Instant devastation. <laughs> Price. Face of violation. What was what was going on in the background? It felt like um, one of your background singers, who was you, was was making love or something during the song. <laughs> Is the, you know what I mean? Just a little, just a little, these, are, these are the subtle things that happen, right. you know, when I take it into my home studio. No, studio. Do, when musicians add those little oohs and ahs, do they just do it like they wing it, or do they, when they're sitting down writing the song, they go, I, I need to put a little ooh in there. I, I, well, I think it could go both ways, but for me, I just, I was just like, this, <sighs> you know, it's not, oh, that, you know. It felt right. <sighs> it made a sexy that, version. The, <sighs> Thing was kind of supposed to be the crowd. You mixed up one of the lyrics, so you I said did? the big line instead of the top line. Oh, so you have to redo that this week. I'm sorry, <laughs> my bad. I, I, des- I decided, by the way, um, and I actually wrote some of this after listening. Um, I got a lot of people who liked the rubber boots guy making an appearance in the Taylor Swift song because right. we don't. Again, for new listeners, the, the the podcast is called the Rubber Boots Podcast because of some character who used to call me. Listen to episode one of season one. Um, and he had, doesn't appear very often on the podcast Not anymore. At all. But we put him in there, and so I decided that I'm going to do a Rubber Boots Guy song. Nice. The, the okay. Rubber Boots Guy will be singing a song I think about, that's amazing. about the Rubber Boots Guy. So that will be our next project. I, I'm looking forward will to that. Will it be ready for next week? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Will okay. it be ready for the end of this season? Probably, Probably. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like your chances. Um, the, but may I just say, I mean... Did you like that rendition? I did. Yeah? Yes, okay. it was very nice. It, like, I, it wasn't meant to be a dancey song. It's it not felt something clean, that Puffy's going to go on on Friday night. What do you mean? Like it was smooth. It felt professional. Yeah, unlike my version. Yours is a little Wait rough. till you hear auto-tune, Jimmy. <laughs> yes. It is going to blow I've, your mind. Like, if you sound really good in auto-tune, are you going to try and flip the script and be a singer? Probably. I it's a re- it's... There could be a remix, too. Like, you could do, do like a halftime. <laughs> Violent. Yeah, that kind of thing, right? right? By the way, that the song, we probably won't end up doing any more with it because that seems to be a dead story already. I don't know if... Yeah, the, that's the, already... They've already said they're... Well, they, I, there's, there's different conflicting reports as to whether the NHL told the refs to dial it back a little bit, but... Mm, it doesn't seem to be last an issue night. They definitely time. in the Leaf game. I don't know didn't. if the player has adjusted that quickly or what, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll see when the actual regular season starts. Um, okay, uh, we don't really have a lot of uh, stuff we saw on Twitter, but there was a couple of things we wanted to mention, and it's really an excuse to play the theme. Freaky pigs, strange chicks, world affairs, polar bears, fake news, nice shoes, big boobs, jack dudes, all of these things and more. As I sat on the shitter. Things that I saw on Twitter. Did we just gloss over the fact that uh, Rod Smith was weightlifting with his penis? 11, 12, come on, little Roddy, 13. Yes, we pretty much did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll let it go like that. Uh, we talked about um, uh, Kevin Durant last week and his supposed shadow accounts. Yeah. Uh, whether he may or may not have uh, praising himself. And uh, we made a joke about uh, Chester McLean, the Lester McLean <laughs> shadow account. <laughs> Our buddy Matt Cade, who sometimes appears on the podcast yep. and, and will likely in the next couple of weeks, he tried to go and start a Chester McLean oh, he did, eh? account as soon as he as soon as he heard this on the podcast, and it was already there. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, was it Lester McLean who started that? Well, we don't know, do we? Uh, and then um, <laughs> started to popping up on my account and also the Rubber Boots account, an account called Deaf Not Duffy, <laughs> which is a picture of me in a in a beard with a beard and glasses written on, who keeps praising me, left, right, <laughs> and center. Now I have to ask: Is this you? <laughs> It is. No, it, it is not me, but everyone will likely think it is me, and it, 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 is, it is quite humorous. Uh, the account's actually called Jimmy, at Def Not Duthie. Uh, it's Jimmy? Jimmy? There it is. You want to see it? Jimmy or, or the, little Jimmy? There it is. <laughs> There's no way you did that. So the tweets are... <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do that uh, image. <laughs> the start of the NHL season means more at TSN James Duthie. Can't wait. He's the best. <laughs> Uh, I hope this guy keeps it going. 
He's the best. People on Twitter are, are funny. That's what we love. That's a very short rendition of uh, things that I saw on Twitter because we need to get to our sponsor segment right now. It is the Fandom Segment. The Fandom Sports app, the only app where you get to argue about sports and win stuff. Vote on arguments, post your own arguments, win fights, collect points, and win cool stuff. Fight with your thumbs, not with your fists. Fandom Sports app available now and coming soon to Android. And by the way, uh, as I explained before, the fandom is still in its test stages, and they want to use our beloved audience as a test audience. So that's why we ask you these questions. We ask you to go on. A new fandom app is coming within a few days, which is... uh, 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 substantial um, improvements to what we have right now, but uh, you went on and you voted. We had a couple questions last week. We had the question about Kyrie Irving. If you were an NBA superstar, would you rather win with LeBron or be the man? Got a lot of great responses to that. And Puffy's question from a couple of weeks before about if Donald Trump owned your team, would you still be a fan of that team. So thank you for all your answers, both sides. Lots of great answers. We had to pick one that would win the autograph. Uh, copy of the guy on the left this week. We like clever responses, right? There was a lot of really good yeah. responses. Uh, this one came from Matthew Moore in 1995. This, this was the one we liked. Trump would probably have some sort of deal with the KHL, <laughs> which would divide the fan base and lead to the downfall of the team. Not a metaphor whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Matthew, you're our winner this week of the autograph copy of Guy on the Left. contact you and we will sign it whichever way you want. In fact, you can get Lester to sign it if you want. You can get Puffy to sign it. You can get Stoff to sign it. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter to us. I don't really sign, I print. Wow. <laughs> bad, bad, bad penmanship. <laughs> bad penmanship. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Can you write? Can you do cursive? Not, well, I can, but it's horrible. Yeah. I was told by my grade 7 or 8 English teacher that if I continued to attempt to do cursive, I would not make it through high school. <laughs> wow. And, and it was like one of those definitive where moments in your life that sticks with you. I changed to printing and I've printed the rest of my life. And look how good my printing oh, is. Oh. Outstanding. <laughs> Equally good. Penmanship. <laughs> Can either, do you guys, either you guys have penmanship? No. I'm, I'm a, not too bad. It's a lost well, art, though. Well, it's a lost art for sure, but you have to take your time. And, nobody and, does. And nobody does. That's the problem. I yeah. think too quick. I think that's my problem. Do you have a good autograph? Have any of you have you no. signed autographs, Lester, at some yeah, point? Absolutely. You have. Oh, you get a lot? The yeah. Latest? Well, after, after the show? Elton Ron. After the show? I mean, I mean you know, depending on where I am, right? Like, if right. I'm, I'm doing my own show, especially. So, do you practice your autographs? I don't practice it. I yeah. just. I practiced a lot when I was, you know, young. Now, do you sign a lot of autographs? You must. Oh, puffy. In this building. <laughs> The guy who came out of the shower saw with the cream. What do you think he wanted? Well, I think I know what he wanted. Uh, no, but I'm a terrible autograph guy, and I have great envy for the uh, the NHL players who are so good at it. Like when I can sign a, a sheet or a photo, but when you, people ask you to sign jerseys and stuff, that's I get nervous yeah, because sure. my penmanship is so bad. And I yeah, end up, I end up actually writing like I did in like grade four, where I go G <laughs> M, and it looks like a kid who just signed his math test or something like yes. that in in grade three. You know who had the best autograph I've ever seen of any pro player? I've got a, I've got an autograph John Beliveau uh, picture. He was meticulous in he everything was he did. Unbelievable. Yeah, really? it's very clear. Jean Beliveau right. it was beautiful. I don't like the guys that just write, you know, squib, which yeah. is kind of what I do, frankly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but it's nice when someone writes a beautiful, yeah. beautiful autograph. Wayne Gretzky had a nice one, too. Gretzky's got a nice autograph. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The you 99 want, you, underneath. You want to hear an embarrassing autograph story? <laughs> I, I don't know why they do this. Sometimes they put you... Uh, when Eberly, Eberly had his golf tournament I hosted for a bunch of years, and, and they had one session where they had a big open autograph session. So you've got Eberly and Taylor Hall, and who else was out there? Brooks Like would be out there. Ryan Nugent Hopkins... And they'd put me at a table. So Your all, own table? Yeah, so they'd all have tables in a row. Oh, and no. all these kids would basically go. And, you know... It it, why did you just refuse? <laughs> no, because it's part of it. And some people would come to me. like, it, But it was more pity. Pity side. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right? And it would be great because the... The dads, let's say the dads would bring their kids. Yeah. And so they'd have, uh, you know, jerseys and hats that everybody would sign and then as they got to me, they would slowly pull back the jerseys and hats. 
I just like pull out a crumpled piece of paper and sign that uh, so I didn't devalue anything. Well, Whenever exactly. somebody asks me to sign their sweater, I always say, are you sure you want me to sign this? Yeah. If you have, you know, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, do you want me to sign this jersey and ruin it for life? But the worst one ever, I did an event in Calgary with Barry Sanders, yep. which nice. was a very cool event. Uh, he's somebody, one of the best running backs. I think the best running back of all time. The most exciting to watch in my personal opinion. And basically, he doesn't do speeches, so they wanted me to interview him uh, in front of this crowd. So beforehand, they're trying to raise money. They have the silent auction and everything. But they put up two tables, yeah. side by each. Yeah. And this was to raise money. Yeah. So it was, and there was a sign, I still have it somewhere, autographs. Barry Sanders, James Duffy, $10 each. So you had to pay. And so I'm sitting there, and now it's the beginning of the night when everybody's first come in, and there's 250 people in line for Barry Sanders. Of course. And then there's me. And I had people in line, but the only people who were in line for me were the ones who didn't want to wait in the Barry Sanders lineup. <laughs> What did they think? <laughs> Until that? it got shorter. Did they, they think, I'm giving 10 bucks for an autograph. I don't want to waste my time with Barry, so I'm going to get this guy's. <laughs> exactly. Wow. But, okay, it's one thing to put me there to sign, but it's another thing to charge $10 yeah. for my signature yeah. and to put it on the same sign, yeah. like a big sign at the, at the entrance <laughs> to the place with my head and Barry Sanders' head. Autographs, $10. Wow. Painful. Uh, the O-Dog had a... a <laughs> oh, Jeff O'Neill has the best stories and uh, shared this one with us the other night on the panel that uh, he plays co-ed softball. Yes. And they were playing in the semifinals the other day and he got a, a single. Yeah, he said it was a bit of a blooper. Blooper bloop, bloop the single. So he's standing on first. They're down by two and I believe it was the last inning. <laughs> right. And the uh, uh, female assistant... Female manager. Manager of the yeah. team yeah. steps out. Oh, no, she's, uh, she's a, being first base coach. Is that correct? Yeah, but I think it was she was the manager. Okay, and she goes, <laughs> Courtesy runner, please, <laughs> which is the co-ed softball name for, for a pinch runner. And, and that's usually because some guys hurt. Her like, injury. Yeah, yeah, they have like a bad knee, you know, right. a trick knee. They don't want to have to run around the base. <laughs> wow. This was a strategic <laughs> call. And o, o turns to her and goes, come on. <laughs> and she goes, she does just ignores him and go, courtesy runner. <laughs> and poor O. Oh my God. It's like, I played in the NHL, I scored 40 goals, and I'm getting taken out of a co ed softball game for a charity runner. <laughs> he did admit, though, it was the right call. <laughs> there was like a hit, and he said, I wouldn't have scored. They have did. <laughs> would have made it to second. And they won. I on a trip the off the I think wall. they won their first game of the finals, too. Yeah, they're in. So, oh, that's uh, hilarious. That's very funny. <laughs> but it, it made me think about uh, most embarrassing sports stories uh, in our career, whether it be from Little League or minor soccer or minor hockey. And so I know I'm kind of getting you guys on the spot with this, but we've all been embarrassed at some point yeah, in time. Yeah, for sure. Do you remember, Puff, an embarrassing one for you? The only one I can, kind of, I can remember is about seven years old and I was playing goalie in soccer, and I was, didn't have a big boot. So Excuse I never, me? Like, I didn't want to, I wasn't good at kicking the ball. Oh, out. so that's why they put you in yeah. that. Oh, so, I see. Yeah. And so I was a little, you know, I was always worried about it, so I used to roll it out a lot. <laughs> You know, That's the wanting goal. to keep possession for my team is really what I was thinking. <laughs> smart, but, smart. And so finally, Coach Five was yelling at me like, "Give it a kick, give it a kick." <laughs> and so I, I gave it a big kick, but I kind of hooked my foot, put it right over my head and into the net. <laughs> <laughs> and the coach's face looking at me was priceless. How, how old are you? I'm about seven. Did you cry? I no, would've... but I was pretty. I was. I was. I didn't play goalie again after that. I was done. That was about midway through the season, and I, I never went back in the net. You just brought a flashback to me. I wasn't going to tell this one, but when I was about 13, 12 or 13, I got like kicked on a soccer play. And we were, I played pretty high-level rep soccer. And uh, so people were men, men by this age. You know, you were supposed to be a man. And I started bawling because it hurt a little. Yeah. It hurt. And the guy on the team's like, he's crying. He's crying. <laughs> and all the guys on their team started like chanting. Cry, baby, cry, oh, baby, oh cry, my baby. God. And my dad was the coach, and he oh. carried me off the field oh. as they all chanted. Now, oh, cry, did baby. he carry you off like uh, Richard Gere? Yes. 
in my arms. <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! You, you weren't crying Daddy still. I, you weren't still crying as you left the field, were you? I think I was. I'm like, I don't God. remember if he carried me like uh, <laughs> like Richard Gere, an officer and a gentleman carrying yeah. Deborah Winger. Oh but it, it was something like that. I got a couple more, but Lester, you have any? I do. Actually, I was going to tell you one about basketball, but I'm going to change it to hockey because I remember there's one time, and this is... Uh, Derivative of your story, uh, Puffy. I had one time in in minor hockey. I think it was my second year of, of uh, hockey playing, and um, we didn't have a goalie. We didn't have a permanent goalie on our team, so each guy was taking turns playing goalie. So my turn came, and I had one practice, and that was pretty good. Like my first guy. I mean, I'm a Habs fan now, but my first real guy that I loved in hockey was Mike Palmatier. So okay, I'm playing goalie, you know, my team, you know, we're practicing, you know, take it, I'm taking slap shots, stopping them, no problem. So fine, that's maybe Thursday night, then we get to Saturday and there's a game. We get to the, we get to the rink and this team that's come in to play us is from another league and they're about a foot and a half taller than, <laughs> than the rest of my team. These slap shots are coming past my head. It's unbelievable. I'm freaking out. I mean, I think they scored about five by me. And now I, I do remember I stopped a, t- a two on O at one point. But I, my vivid memory of that whole game, and this is the first and last time I ever played goal, was by the third period, we'd switched ends again, and the clock was behind me. So my parents told me, we never saw anybody look behind them at the time to see what time was left <laughs> in the game in their life than I was. So I had like a rubber neck just from looking how much time was left in the claim because I had to get out because I knew I was done as goalie. That was it. And I, <laughs> I, swear, I, heard somebody, I, heard, I swear I heard somebody on the other bench, take his head off, take his head off. I was like... No, never again. It was mean, man. Yeah, but what a gift of music that was. Well, yeah, exactly. True. Right. right. Stuff? Uh, I have one. It's maybe not a direct uh, sports story, but it's equally embarrassing. Uh, a buddy, uh, this was like in my mid-20s, me and a buddy of mine, uh, I think we're like off of university for the day or something. So we decided, hey, we'll go to the gym. And, you know, they have those group fitness classes there and stuff like right. that. So we're like, I'll oh, whip ourselves into shape, uh, go to one of these classes. So I think it was like an 11 a.m. one. And we went and it was, uh, you know, a bunch of, uh, like, I guess, mothers who were there during the day and like older ladies and the two of us, two guys in their young 20s. Uh, we couldn't keep up with the class. Um, <laughs> most of the class was filled with the instructor yelling at my friend because he was doing the exercises wrong. <laughs> now, at one point, I just started, uh, it got to the point where I thought I was going to throw up. So I got up, uh, walked outside to the water fountain. I was taking a sip. And a 60-year-old woman <laughs> came out of the class to come and check on me. <laughs> wow. But those yeah. ladies are in ridiculous shape. Yeah, right? Well, I think they were the ones, like, they come every day and they yeah. do oh, that I know. sort of, of thing. I know. Uh, it's all yeah. conditioning. You ever been to a spin class? And like, in general, I think women kick men's ass at a lot of things, but in particular, those things. Yeah. And it, it's humiliating. It's funny you said that. I did uh, Road Hockey to Conquer Cancer, this great event in Toronto, a few years ago. At the event, uh, this guy comes up to me and says, hey, we're doing a Reebok CrossFit demonstration. Would you mind being one of the whatever quote unquote celebrities that goes up on stage? I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Did not thinking it was not even thinking about it. Yeah. So it ended up being the people on stage were myself, uh, Rosie McLennan, uh, okay, okay. trampoline okay, gold yeah. medalist, yes. uh, Melissa Tancredi from the national yep. soccer team, who's and I, I believe Liz Manley. So okay. those were who's still in excellent shape. Yeah. And and me, and so I thought, okay, we go up there and stage. So a little crowd gathers around, a couple of hundred people, and we're going to demonstrate Reebok CrossFit. So I thought we'd be like, you know. I'd do a burpee and yeah. do it funny and everybody would laugh and <laughs> that would be the end of it, right? So no, we're going to do like a, a 15 minute CrossFit workout. This is what, so it was, it's all like, it was medicine balls. So basically you do, I, you start and you go down. So you start with uh, like 12 burpees and then 12 bounce the medicine balls and then 12, one other thing, push-ups or what it may, whatever it may be. And then you do 11 of each one. And then you do 10 of each oh, one. Man. And then you do nine all the way down to one. And only in 15 minutes? Well, whatever it took. Yeah. I don't know what it is. 20 minutes. I was freaking dying. Well, and I was trying to be TV boy yeah. and keep the smile on my face and like cut jokes for the crowd who was watching this. Yeah. And, and these, like, the girls were, the girls were, str- like, they were sweating. Yeah. It was tough on them, but they're elite athletes. athletes yeah. I finished... Uh, I don't think I finished, actually. I mean, I f- we sort of finished or they cut us off. Yeah. I went to the back and puked. Really? On the back of the stage. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's the- 
Uh, it was... <laughs> Now, nobody saw me puke. Yeah. Like, I was smart enough to walk off to the back and sit down and, and puke. And oh, man. I, almost, I, thought I, was, I really thought I was going to die on stage well, at that moment of a heart attack. You can't, you, you, you wow. know, in, in fairness to you, they can't put you in that situation. You know what <laughs> I mean? well, they probably I mean, looked at him that, and said, this guy's in great that shape. That could have been a loss. loss yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're you know, next to Rod Smith, you're the franchise. <laughs> you know? Like, serious Lester. Yeah. That, that could have been a serious litigation. What if you died? Conscience of the podcast. Thanks, Lester. No, I'm just saying. I I, know. You know, I, I need to talk to somebody about that. Maybe yeah. you know what? Maybe it's a song in that. What if James died? <laughs> that's the that's the great that's the great serious Lester comment. You know? What if you died? <laughs> when we remix serious Lester, throw that one in there with, hey, it's the quality of your life. I don't want to live the ninety and whatever the other one was. Uh, those weren't the stories I was going to tell. Uh, two quick ones in grade five. It was a big deal to me that I made the t- I made the track team and got to go to like the regional track meet in the two hundred because I was just okay. Yeah, but I made I think I was maybe the alternate and one guy couldn't go. So it was a big deal to me. So I sat sat all day for my race, and I sat on the grandstands, and a big wad of gum stuck to my ass. I did not notice it. And so I was so paranoid, because I think there was this girl, grade five's that age where you don't really admit to liking girls, but you're starting to like girls. There was this girl there I liked who was really athletic, and I didn't want to see it. And then somebody saw it, and they started calling me gum ass. That's one would do. (laughs) <laughs> and so when I ran my 200 heat, uh, I don't remember this. I'm pretty sure I put one of my arms over my ass. While so, running the so 200. So no one would see the gum. Oh, so geez. I came dead last, and I think I cried again. And my, dad, <laughs> my dad picked me up and carried me to the car. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the and the other more recent one, uh, I, I wasn't a great hockey player, as you guys know. I, I, I got decent by the time I was 14, but gave it up and took up skiing instead. And uh, played again, like, um, pick up and wreck in university and then I just stopped playing yep. completely and because you're the hockey host there's always a bit of an expectation For so sure. I, I always passed up playing celebrity games and such because I didn't want to be playing with ex-NHLers and just make myself look like an idiot yeah. right? so uh, my son a couple of years ago has a father-son game I would always take part in those because it's your kid and it's different with your kid For sure. but again I, I, just, I took it easy and just tried to you know, my skills have diminished. So, first shift, I, I'm not paying attention what I'm, to what I'm doing, and I hit without looking like the star player of the team. This is like 10-year-olds. Oh, no. This is Pee Wee. And then I, he goes down, and then I fall backwards on top of him. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? Oh. <laughs> and so the whole game stops. The coaches come rushing out. <laughs> Your dad runs out, picks him up, carries him off. The <laughs> <laughs> they they peel me off this kid, and I'm I'm, a, I'm just not the best player out for the season <laughs> with my ineptitude on the ice. Uh, he was okay, but that was the moment I gave up father son games, and I don't think I'll ever play in one. Well, fair I'll, I'll ever play fair in one again. Uh, we this is by the way the most extended fandom segment ever because we only did half of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got on Sorry Fandom. We get sidetracked. It's what we do. So it's time for this week's fandom question. Once again, download the fandom app. The new version's coming, I believe, in a few days. And uh, a- find the question. Answer the question. Be creative. Get your friends to vote for you. Get your friends to download the app because that is one thing we take into consideration. You can, you can do likes and such, and there's a standings in the section under the question. So that's half of how we measure who's going to win. The other half is we'll, we'll make the ultimate decision. Because we can't have you completely you know, do a fraudulent vote. Yeah. Right. And have all your buddies vote and you get 27 likes and the next guy's at two. So that's, but that we do consider that. For sure. A hundred percent. And then we, we end up choosing our, our favorite ourselves. But the fandom question this week that will be up on fandom is, what is it again, Puff? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. The anthem. Okay. You know what? Let me give a little preamble to this. Um, Obviously, what's happened with the anthem protests in the States has been a major story. And I pondered for a while whether we'd talk about it here on the podcast and decided ultimately that we would not. And that's not because we all have strong beliefs on this. Uh, If you watched the quiz the other night, we expressed those beliefs. But I do want this pod to be an escape from the stuff you're always hearing. And 
I, you know, it is everywhere these days, and I don't want this to ever be everywhere. For it's, sure. I want this to be other stuff. And so uh, we'll skip all the Trump and all the other crap. And if you want my opinion, uh, watch the quiz from the other day. So, uh, but, but we do have a relevant, it is a major topic right now in sports. Yeah. So uh, we, we flipped it around, and the question is, Puff? Uh, should they play the national anthem before sports? Very yeah. simple. Very simple. This yes question's on fandom. No. Yes or no, should they play the anthem before sporting events? So, Lester, what is your feeling on this? My feeling is uh, is no, actually. And it doesn't mean uh, I'm not patriotic or anything like that. I just think that uh, we've come to a time when you really, if you really think about it, what is the relevance of playing the national anthem in a game? For example, take uh, my beloved Montreal Canadiens. There's Americans on the team. There's Canadians on the team. Czech, Russian. Um, you know, uh, right. Dutch. You know, like, I mean, at that, at at some point, you just go, look. For all that, that all the controversy, maybe it's just time to just do away with that tradition and just, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it's true. You're right. Like Canadian hockey games, they'll play the Canadian national anthem, and there'll be players from other countries. In the states, if it's two American teams, they'll only play the American nat- yeah. national anthem, and sixty percent of the players are Canadian. So there's something to that. Puffy, your thoughts? I'm. All, I agree. I don't. I think the anthems sort of run its course before sporting events. But I do like, like when it's a big game, the national anthem can kind of help with the whole atmosphere. So I like what they do in soccer with the Champions League, and they have the, the Champions League anthem gets you kind of riled up. I love that thing, by the way. It's yeah. great. So it's not like that. You know, <laughs> can you get the actual words and do a version of that? Oh, uh, sure. You know yeah. what the I lyrics think they are? Just say, keep saying these are the champions. champions. Oh, that's it. That's all oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, the maybe why don't we add more lyrics? Yeah. These should. are the champions of the football game. <laughs> <laughs> There's Lino Messi. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you guys to an extent. But I, I do think, as, as Puffy says, you know, every game, every regular season game, it's probably kind of much. But I am a traditionalist, so I don't have a problem with it. I like it before the big game. I like the old Kate Smith or, um, you know, in Philadelphia when they popped her up on the big screen yeah, even after really cool. she had passed away. Uh, in Montreal, there's always there's always been good ones. There's sometimes yeah, no. before yeah. a playoff game that it really is something. So maybe there's some sort of hybrid. The Olympics, obviously, it matters. That they, sure. You need to continue doing that after somebody wins a gold medal. Uh, professional sporting events, I, I'd like to see it in some capacity. Uh, again, do you do it once in a while to make it special? I don't know how you'd set those rules, but I would still like to see the anthem be part of it if we could somehow separate. The question will be now, can we ever separate politics from the national anthem? Stoff, weigh in before we leave. Uh, I would forego the anthem just because of all the controversy it causes now. Right. So, yeah. All right. Uh, that is your fandom question of the week. Please go on to fandom. Yes or no, should the anthem be played before sporting events? Make your comments underneath the question. Next week, somebody will win something. We're giving away books for now. I have more prizes on the way. I do promise you that. Um, what else do you want to do? Hey, do you want to do another dream? Sure. Last week's dream was outstanding. I don't know. I don't like how Stoff edits my dreams and makes me sound creepier than I really am. It's disturbing because they're already creepy. <laughs> now I'm going to give you guys choice because I had a dream um, two nights ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and I had one, another one from my Hawaii trip in the summer, not about Hawaii. So, um, so where so, is that you were? Sorry? I'm happy that you've, I'm happy you've switched <laughs> to the less traditional pronunciation. Okay, so there's one dream I had this summer that re- related to a Leafs uh, game day on the road. I can tell you that one. Or I can tell you my more recent one that uh, is about European handball. What, well, what do you choose? European handball, I'll go with that All one. right, well, this is the most recent one from a couple of days ago. Although I think the Leafs game day one is probably more entertaining. But again, uh, I, I caution the audience. These are not necessarily funny. They are just what they are. Yeah. You take them for what they are. I pour myself out there. They don't make sense. It's just out there for you to analyze and... To and enjoy hopefully a dream analyst or not one enjoy. Uh, I think we should. Uh, we have to. We need a dream analyst in. I, I would a love dream that. weaver. It'd be great. Right now, do we want to do? You, you want to do a new version of your dreams no, here? Man, All right, let's do it. Them. Let's hear it. It's time for dreams. So baby, dry your eyes. Save all the tears you cried. Oh, that's what dreams are made of. 
I'm in some giant house or a store. I, I don't remember. It's a weird place. And they're, they're playing European handball, but with articles of clothing. So like a t-shirt rolled up. That seems like it'd be pretty difficult. Or a shoe. Wow. <laughs> Maybe they were just throwing shoes at each no, other. No, whatever is there. Uh, there are, but there are multiple balls on the court. Per se. Now, have you ever watched European handball? I love European handball. I can't figure out why it has not caught on. That's like North volleyball America. for me. Why don't we buy the rights to European handball and and make it a big deal? That's a winner because it's like idea. basketball. Everyone hockey, loves it at the Olympics, and it's it's all it really well, is awesome. It's very North American if you think about it. Like yeah. every it's. Well, I'll tell you what, I was actually, this leads into something, I was actually a little chastised l- uh, last week because I don't mention my day job aspect of TSN on this right. podcast. You're a so. big deal, that's well, what people don't get. Sirius Lester runs yeah. a network. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Uh, it, it, yes, I do, I do run ESPN Classic, that's fair. But, to your point, I will look into this handball thing and see if there's something we can do about that. I'll host it. Yeah? I'll host it. L now, pro bono for Pro bono? You. Will yeah? you do play-by-play? No. Play? <laughs> I do nothing <laughs> yeah, pro bono. <laughs> Will, will I you do play, play by play, play or will you be the host? Maybe should I branch out? I think Maybe you, that would I think be my place. Be a, that'd be that'd you, you be could good opportunity. Become the voice of handball, the, the in voice this of European handball in North America. You could in come North up America, with catchphrases yeah. too, right? Yes, like the Vin Scully of European well, handball. Plus, like when we yeah. go to see the 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 European Championships, what should be my first? Tro- what's trip. my my first cat European hand? My first catchphrase, um, not scores. No, <laughs> how, how about Poppy shoots. It's in. That was a hand job. Four <laughs> hand jobs for Puffy. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, where the hell was I? Okay. So um, anyway, Europe, we're playing European handball with shoes and, and T-shirts in my dream. And I am amazing. I can do like flips, shoot between my legs while upside down. Yep. I'm probably the best player this whatever. I don't even think it's a league has ever seen all right. Some of the other players are strangers. Some are odd, random people from my life. A, for, a former uh, hockey coach was one. Craig McTavish was one. Oh yeah, he's Mac playing. T. Mac He'd be T. good, I think. Mac T was playing in the game. An old girlfriend. Now was, was Mac one. T wearing a helmet? Or <laughs> <laughs> was he? Mac T. That was, was in full cage. Full cage. It was the great irony of the dream. <laughs> um. Okay. So, you have to remember, I typed this at like 6 o'clock in the morning when I wake up. As I'm leaving the house, it's crowded at the front door. I put my hand on a railing and crush a reindeer ornament made of straw. Oh, man. It belongs to my accountant's partner, uh, whose name is Alan, Alan Young. So, he's hosting this party. Yeah. And he is not happy, said that it was his daughter made that for him. So I left the house in shame. I walk outside. I'm in a nice shopping area. Donald Trump is there. Oh. So uh, this, this is our one touch on political story, but I guess I was thinking about yep. him. He's wearing a leather jacket and like looking badass. Like I don't think he was wearing anything under the leather jacket. Oh. I'm like leather pants. Oof. And I say, I see him. I'm holy crap. It's not, I, I, and this really bothered me. I say, what's up, Mr. President? Where is this place? Which bothers me because I would think that I would have cost. I don't, yeah. I don't like Donald Trump. I said, where is this place? Like, where am I? Yeah. And he responds, this is America dick face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and did you just eat that? Did you just take it? Or did you stand up for yourself? I, I don't I think I just walked away. I, I remember waking up very unhappy with. Um, the Donald put you in your place. Right. And now, now this dream continues. Now I'm walking through the town. Jean Chrétien is there. And I'm in a small town in Quebec, and people are, have lined the streets cheering for Jean Chrétien. So it's somehow I've gone from... It's in the same place. Uh, Lisa Laflamme is there. Uh, she, she creeps into my dreams occasionally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, we leave the town and board a plane to China for the Olympics. You and Lisa. Yes. First class. David Amber is there. He's hosting for CBC, our good friend David Amber. Yeah. Puffy is also on the plane, but not in first class. That doesn't shock me. Uh, Puffy is watching a 1950s love story movie on his screen. Uh, I try to go to the washroom. By mistake, I enter the cockpit, and the pilots are naked. That's the end of my dream. <laughs> wow. 
I don't know if there's any. <laughs> no, there's no comment <laughs> needed no. at the end. I that's what the point of this segment is yeah. for me, just to explain. Wow, I just read crazy. what I wrote down, and that's the end. Now, of was it. David Amber in first class? Or David was Amber was definitely in first class. Glad, glad to hear some yes. black people in New Jersey. There was a. There was a. <laughs> there have been some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are usually a lot of black people in my dreams, all right? That's <laughs> Predominantly black people in his dreams. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, that's another edition of this segment of dreams. I, uh, I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. When you Any were, questions that come out of the dreams, yeah. throw them my way. When you were playing in the handball game, yeah. were you watching yourself playing and flipping? Or were you... Or were you I think I was doing you it. You think you were doing it. So you were upside down yeah. flipping and... I have, a, I have either two types of sports dreams. I think I've, I've told you. One where I can't, I can't do anything. Or one when I'm just totally awesome. I've told you guys about the golf dream where I can't get off the tee, which yeah. is definitely sexual in some sort of yeah. way. But then I'll have the occasional dream like this where I'm just amazing at something, and then when I wake up, I get really upset. Oh. So uh, that was, yeah, that's I got a lot of weird. That was just going a couple nights ago. Yeah, it was two nights ago. Wow. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a great thing that you can remember these things and you have the foresight to write them. It down. only had like I would say once a month. I really remember it well, but now I'm because I'm conscious of it. Uh, I do, and. Uh, yeah. We need to have a dream analyst. If any dream analysts are listening out there. Do you notice one thing we do on the podcast is every week we say, you know, we should have, we, we need to have a dream analyst. We need to have Adnan Verk on. We need to do this. And we never do I, I talked to Adnan. He said when he's in Toronto next, he'll come on. He wants yeah. to be in studio. I don't buy that. How often does he come home? He comes home, I don't know, every couple, about, I'd say three times a year. <laughs> and and he comes gonna, from like a He's going to happen to be a day stay. that we're doing the podcast? Oh, yeah. He's always in this area. Right. I'll believe it when I see it. I'd, I think I'd rather have Mini Adnan Verk <laughs> from the Stanley Cup Final in the studio. <laughs> it's time for... It's, he come firing in. <laughs> it's time for Puffy's Hypotheticals. Yo, one, two, one, two. Puffy's Hypotheticals, I'm messing with my mind. Puffy's Hypotheticals, what's gonna be this time? Puffy's Hypotheticals, I'm blowing. I always like to be surprised by Puffy's hypotheticals, um, but uh, not to steal your thunder, but I think I might have even come up with this one. Did you start start this the other night in the studio or me? I think it might have been you, yeah. Okay. We, so we're talking about it for We me. were killing time during another useless NHL preseason game. Thank God they're almost over. I'm sorry. I mean, at least we've got full rosters now, but those, yeah, last those game split was squad good, games a week ago were hor- hor- yeah. awful. I mean, you can pick out one guy on the team you want to watch, which is fun, or you know, a couple of... The young kids yeah. to see if they're going to make it, but We're it's, talking about seventh defenseman. Yeah. Stuff. So anyway, we started thinking about. Uh, I don't know how this came up, but it was. I'll, I'll let you ask, ask the question, Puffy. Well, we start. I think the question started with it was one or the other giving up something. Oh right. And then we you had to give up something, and some, then we morphed it into, into how much money would you need to be given to give up sex for life? Right. So that's it. You're done. That's the question? Yeah. yeah. No, you're done. So you're done. And we, we, we set the parameters for this. Um, there would still be, you could still cuddle. Cuddle. Kissing. And you could do kissing. Kissing. And that uh, was, that nothing was, else. That was it. There was no, there's no sexual touching. No. Um, you, Just to clarify, mm-hmm. you can't, we're talking sex overall. There's, you can't, you, you Nothing. Do, no second base, no third no base. No second base, no and you can't, you can't, you can't. You can, can't, you can, can take care of yourself. You can take care of yourself. Yeah, you can take That's care of yourself, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But no, like, dry humping or anything <clears throat> like that. <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> so, I mean, there's got to be a dollar value. The standard married guy line would be, so nothing changes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so, we we thought about this. I'll, I'll go first because... Uh, I came up with, I think in the end, $20 million. So, I, I, $20 million. That's now, I'm. 19 of it, which would go to Green's fees. He would just be golfing by the way, all <laughs> the time. I also, so I also wanted to change, uh, to think about our female listeners for a second, yes. because we always want them to participate in these things. If you are a, like a 20 year old woman listening to the podcast, uh, I want you to be able to have children. So yes. So, you will be yes. able to have. Very, very standard um, 
generic, generic, uh, almost um, almost of a medical nature. Sure. Yes, sex in order to have your child. Yes. But if you want three children, you'll only get three times. Yes. Right. But we That's want fair. we you know we yeah. don't want it to be like a. You're having to decide whether or not to have children. Or right. Not, exactly. Yeah. And it well, it doesn't. You can't just be purely. But I guess that's the same for the fellas too. It has to be. They gotta because they gotta be in the yeah. mix, right? Can't have one without the other. Okay. So <laughs> so the only the amount of times is the amount just of, for procreation, right? And it's strictly it's very very mechanical. Yeah. No fun and around. No. Okay, so th- those are the rules. Those are the ground. Those ground are the rules. ground rules, Lester. And uh, so twenty million dollars. I, you know, I've I've had a good run, and I just figure I s- would still like to be involved in the sex <laughs> <laughs> in that game <laughs> in the whole sex industry. <laughs> but uh, for twenty million, I think I could. So uh, nineteen nineteen five. You're no. you're saying no. What troubled me is I thought twenty million was on the low end. Right? Yeah. I think it's, it's giving up a big part of your life. It's an important part of being a human being. For sure. And then I asked my wife the question when Uh-oh. I got home. And she said, three million. <laughs> <laughs> so I value it seven times. If I win the lottery, that's my first three million I'm spending. <laughs> I said, three million. I mean, honey, that's a lot of money, but three, <laughs> three million? <laughs> but She's James, like, nah. if you both do it, you get to keep 17 million for yourself out of your 20 million. Good. That's a good point there. <laughs> Got to do the math. Man. That's a strong. That's once again, Stoff always crystallizes everything. Wow. Uh, Jeff O'Neill responded a hundred grand first in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of himself. I, I do not well, believe him whatsoever. Got a little self esteem. Yeah. He got pulled out of a one. softball But we got game. a couple of other answers, guys. Like a hundred million, two hundred million. No way I'd ever do it. So uh, a serious Lester? No way I'd ever do it. I mean, I, no, no, no money, no, no money to give up that loving. You, you know what? It's not even about that. It's just that's humanity. That's what we're talking about, baby. You know, when I think about playing music, even even if you're 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 sitting there playing anything, there's to a degree, there's always some element of sexuality for me. Right. But albeit, it's more valuable to you because you always have your own songs on in the background while you're playing. <laughs> That's where they're most frequently played. Hello. 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 Do a favor for me, Lester. Um, the next time you're in one of those situations, put a little face-off violation on. <laughs> Instant devastation. Face-off violation. Let's see how that works. Uh, Puffy, what was your number? <laughs> My number is the exact amount it would take to buy MLSE. Because I'd want to be able to buy professional sports teams. So I'd be able to occupy my time. So about a, a billion. Running. I would say it's worth it's worth over a billion dollars. Yeah, it probably about two or three. A couple billion dollars. Yeah. Then I would get the Leafs, Raptors, and TFC. So you feel that the pleasures that you get would be satisfied Yes. By being the By owner, of, being all the owner of all those teams. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. But you know what would be the frustration in that as a young owner of all those teams? Yes. I know I know you're a happily married man, yes. but there would be like temptations two, for a sure. lot of temptations and mm-hmm. you'd have to resist them all. No, there'd be just a lot of cuddling. <laughs> <laughs> Intense. <laughs> Come into the owner's suite and cuddle. Puffy, what do you do with be that? the creepiest owner? <laughs> the scandal that would break. This is CNN breaking news. The owner of the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, (laughs) Toronto Raptors, and uh, Toronto FC has been (laughs) embroiled in a cuddling scandal. Numerous interns and staff members have come forward saying that they've been forced into cuddling situations in the owner's suite. Stoff, uh, what's your dollar figure? I'm going to go with the puppy's hypothetical standard of $1 billion. $1 oh, really? billion. Dollars. Oh, Again. Got to meet Stoff's wife, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, that's it for this week's edition of the Rubber Boots Podcast. Again, uh, download the Fandom app. Please participate in our question this week, which is, again, should the anthem be played at all at professional sporting events? We'll announce the prize winner next week. I can't even remember the name of the guy who won this week, but I'll be in contact with you on Twitter to get you your stuff. Uh, please tell your friends as well to download the app. Please tell your friends to follow us at, at rubberboots.com. Uh, if you want to sponsor us, yeah. send us a note on there and we'll figure something out. Okay? Thanks for listening, everybody. See ya. This is JD's podcast. JD's Rubber Boots podcast. We go and sit and relax and tell you all sorts of stories. Mm-hmm. Talk about-
talk about life and a little sports You know we're gonna play some games And if nothing else, you know we're gonna have a laugh Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight?